morning. Uh, very happy to be here uh, to speak at an institute whose president, vice president, and the director of Turkish studies are all women. So women rule the Middle East here. So that's a really good sign. Um, let me just begin uh, 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 by uh, outlining a few points about Turkish foreign policy. And uh, I'll touch upon the few points that Chairman Çelik uh, also referred to. Now, one problem that we see in regards to the understanding of Turkish foreign policy these days uh, is a distinction or is a tension between what I call uh, process analysis versus picture analysis. Most of the time, what people do is that they take a picture of an incident, of a moment, of an event, freeze that picture, and on the basis of that, they extrapolate something much larger, which in our view does not really logically follow from that. Rather, what we want to do is, uh, is to give you a process analysis, that is, look at the events, series of events that have led up to, for example, the know what at the UN Security Council, our engagement with Syria, our involvement, very heavy involvement inside the Iraq and Lebanon and other places. If you look at uh, this whole process, the background, the larger picture, uh, a, a completely different understanding uh, emerges from there. And I will come back to this issue of whether Turkey is turning away from the West through its uh, engagements in these areas um, uh, I within, within that context. Uh, as uh, the previous speakers mentioned, uh, Turkish foreign policy has uh, been displaying a greater dynamism uh, and uh, has been the subject of uh, various debates and discussions um, in the West, in, in Turkey, and in the Arab world. Uh, there are reasons for that, obviously. Uh, Turkey uh, now is, for the first time, acting with a psychology, with an understanding, with a confidence that reflects the realities of the post-Cold War era. There are still people, countries, uh, uh, that uh, live in the, in the world of the post-Cold, uh, or the Cold War era, uh, uh, dynamics and balances, but Turkey now is moving into uh, very fast into the 21st century. Secondly, Turkey is diversifying its foreign policy. That is, uh, Turkey is moving in multiple directions uh, as dictated by its own geography and history. The title of this conference is uh, The New Geo Geopolitics uh, uh, and Turkey, and you have to add to this geopolitics also history. There's two elements, that is where Turkey is and wh what kind of historical background it comes from determine Turkey's self-perception, Turkey's understanding, its place or standing in the world and of course in our part of the world. Now, during the Cold War it was very easy to have a unidirectional uh, or one-dimensional foreign policy where you had to make choices between very clear categories, east and west, north and south, this and that. Uh, but now we live in a world in which choices have become much more sophisticated, complicated. This is reflected, obviously, in other parts of the world, not only in Turkey. Now, when Turkey engages in these different foreign policy areas, uh, what we are doing is we are diversifying this potential. Third, Turkey is also acting in its own national interest, uh, our own economic interests, security interests, and, uh, and regional interests. Uh, to give you one example, uh, Turkey's security concerns regarding the PKK, for example, uh, have shaped uh, its foreign policy vis-a-vis -vis Syria, Iraq, Iran, uh, and other uh, countries uh, in the world, and that has strengthened in many ways our partnership, for example, with the U.S. Uh, and with Europe. Uh, that threat still remains uh, there, and at least in the past, that has forced Turkey to develop better relations. As a result of that understanding, uh, Turkey has mended its relations with Syria, with Iran, with Iraq, in a way that surprised many people over the last decade or so. Uh, ten years ago, we came to the brink of war with Syria, but now uh, uh, we have a very different type of relationship uh, with Syria. As Chairman Çelik mentioned, uh, when we started this engagement policy with Syria, a lot of people in this town criticized Turkey for doing uh, what it was doing at that time. Uh, but now, as it turns out, a lot of people appreciate that engagement. And as a result of that, now the Obama administration has come to the point of appointing an ambassador to Syria. Now, has that been... Uh, in the interest uh, of all the parties involved in our VBS. The same thing uh, we are hoping will play out uh, in the case of Iran, and I'll come back to that uh, in just a few moments. Now, uh, in uh, carrying out this diverse, multidimensional, and extremely dynamic foreign policy, uh, there are certain principles that we try to follow, and those principles are based on our long-term strategic partnership uh, with our American and European friends, but also reflect the realities of the region of the world in which we live. 
zero problem with neighbors policy is a reflection of that as it was formulated by our foreign minister Davutoglu. Uh, in our view, it's an application of European good neighborhood policy to our own region. We don't see any contradiction in terms of values there. Uh, we try to apply the same principle. I, I made this analogy before at another conference um, when our European and American allies make similar attempts and try to improve relations with their own difficult actors, whether between the United States and Russia, between the United States and China, uh, or Europe and other actors, uh, this is hailed as a major contribution to world peace. To give you an example, when President Bush invited, uh, I think he was the president at that time, President Putin, uh, to his uh, uh, ranch in Texas uh, for a couple of days, talk about uh, U.S.-Russian relations, talk about disarmament, uh, the MPP, et cetera, uh, this was hailed as a major contribution to world peace. Uh, many people said this is a bold move, it's an important initiative, etc. And we did the same thing. We believed that that was a good move uh, to, to lower tensions uh, between the U.S. and Russia. Now, when we try to do the same thing with Russia, with Iran, with Syria, uh, with, with other countries in our part of the world, uh, this is interpreted in a different way. Uh, we see this as, as an extension of that good neighborhood policy. Four major principles uh, uh, guide our understanding of, uh, of our region and of our foreign, foreign policy. Um, uh, and I'll try to be uh, brief about each, uh, but each one uh, uh, is, is an important pillar uh, of, of this uh, foreign policy architecture that is emerging now uh, in Turkey. The first is security. We act in the interest, in the security interest of our country, of our people, uh, but also in the, in, in the security interest of our region. Because we believe that we cannot live in a secure environment region when the whole region uh, is uh, um, surrounded by uh, wars, by uh, uh, civil war, uh, tensions, uh, fighting, sectarian, uh, ethnic uh, violence, invasion, occupation, and so on and so forth. When you don't live in a secure environment, you yourself cannot be secure. But there, security does not simply mean state security, it also means human security. That is securing the lives of human beings and uh, ensuring their well-being. And that is a key element in regional stability. But security by itself is not sufficient. It has to be complemented by another major principle, and that is freedom. That is, the ability of people to choose, uh, to make their own choices uh, uh, for their uh, way of life, uh, for their civil rights, civil liberties, for their uh, political rights, respecting differences, uh, and doing all this without getting into the business of nation building or meddling in the internal affairs of other countries. Now, we believe that striking a balance between security and freedom is key uh, for any country. Uh, after uh, the 9-11 terrorist attacks uh, on the United States, the balance between security and freedom in this country uh, was tipped, as you know, uh, in the favor or in favor of uh, security and to the detriment of many civil liberties. Now, uh, in our part of the world, we have seen many examples of this. In spite of the security challenges, Turkey has been trying to address, for example, the Kurdish issue through a democratic initiative to strike a balance between security and freedom. And we believe that ultimately uh, we will reach that goal. But if we sacrifice security in the name of freedom, we end up in chaos. Uh, 